nothing to do with that. He just got school. Who are you? I'm his cousin. You're his cousin? We can do this in a minute. I'm in the middle of an investigation. I'm in the middle of a fucking. Give me your fucking name so I can keep a name. A group of delinquent teens with a criminal record faces off with the police, but this time, their numbers work to their advantage. The officers are up against unexpected danger and challenges. No, no ma'am. What you sorry? It's already, bro. Oh, what you doing there, fool? Why? Because it's called loitering and prowling. Oh my god, Lena. <laughs> Join us as we uncover what happened, how the police handled these wild cubs, and the legal lessons we can learn from this confrontation. My daughter and that's okay. my son. Your daughter is under arrest. She um, hit two officers. They tried to tackle Rashad, and that's when she jumped okay, on him. Hey, hey. What happens when a group of delinquent teens forms a gang, spreading fear throughout the neighborhood? Not only do they wreak havoc on the community and intimidate residents, but these teens also go as far as directly confronting the police. On September 28, 2023, a team of officers was urgently dispatched to respond to a brawl involving a group of approximately 20 teenagers, some of whom had prior criminal records. Upon the officers' arrival, the teens attempted to flee and obstruct the police investigation. The situation escalated further when other members of the group decided to fight back in an effort to protect those being apprehended by the police. Where do you live at? Where do you live? Uh, what, what, what building? Come on now. I no, came out here what building do you live in? So I'm going to tell you. Uh -huh. This ain't a, oh, I'm going to tell you, you're going to get Come on, what you doing there, fool? Why? Because it's called loitering and prowling. And you... I just came, got, I just came my head. Him. He ain't got nothing to do with that. Who he just you? got school. Who are you? I'm his cousin. You're you're his cousin? cousin? I'm his cousin. I ain't do nothing. You can take me. You can take me. You can take me. Come on. Hey, no, come on. Yo, put your hands on. Get the f***ing Get the And the most aggressive of them all was this young woman, who charged at the officers and delivered two punches straight to their faces. She must have thought she was starring in an action movie. But what's the reality? She's now facing battery on a police officer, a serious charge that could land her up to one year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000 under Georgia Code Title 16 May 16, 24. It wasn't just this girl. Aside from the officers, the entire crowd was full of young Karens. A group of officers going head-to-head -head with a gang of teenage Karens. What tactics will the police use to bring these teens under control? This is definitely something worth watching. Get out of here now. You work here. All right, kick rocks. Where do you live at? All right, kick rocks. What you want? Rent, rent her? Hey, okay, okay. I'll get down. I'll get down. Call my mama. Call my mama. Call my mama. Where do you live? Where do you live? Where do you live? Then leave. Where do you live? Get your hands out of your pants. Where do you live at? Huh? Where do you live at? Why are you in my face, cousin? All right, cool. Where are you in Nobody this to y'all. I didn't do nothing to you. Stand yes, up. Yes, you did. Cause all I did was put you in cuffs. Don't give me the f off this ground. No, See no, how y'all just dropped down. Calm down. If you don't live here, leave. Y'all got my brother. What the f you didn't even do? You don't live here, leave. If you live here, go to your home. Come get my phone. Calm down. I told you no. It what does know me? She won't hurt you. No. no. She ain't did. So why she can't get her phone? Stand back. Just ignore her, Austin. Okay. You want to go to jail? My God. No. My God. No. Come to the garden. They got her in the car, bro. Step away. Hey, I'm on the phone. Stop talking. Why you keep talking? Yeah, hold on. Whatever. Tell my daddy to get out here, boy. I'm on my soap. Get in the mind, dude.
Man, shut up, man. Uh, chill out, bro. Man, he did just arrest him too. Oh, boy, I got one. Where do you live at? Forty-six. All right, you're about to come here and talk to me. Where do you live at? Uh, good. You do have to talk to me. Watch me. All right, then cool. We're going to handcuffs. Come on. Number five. All obstruction. Yeah, like, the last time you talked to me, you said you're gonna. I didn't, say, I didn't say that. So I didn't want to answer your question. That's called obstruction. That's not and right now, loading and prowling and obstruction. That, 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 you know the rule, love, bro? I know the rule. Like, you just put me in handcuffs. So, so the absolutely, it's not a rule. So, bro, let me I'm not sure where you got that rule from, but that's not a rule. You don't have to answer my question. You can go in handcuffs. Take a seat. Now it's called loading and prowling and obstruction. Oh. Have a seat. Wondering where the aggressive attitude and blatant disrespect of the girl in the blue shirt came from? The answer becomes clear as soon as her mother shows up. Instead of checking on the situation or attempting to calm down the other teens like the first mother did, this one walks straight up and starts criticizing the police, visibly upset that her beloved daughter and son were being arrested. However, the mother's lack of understanding about the rights and duties of the police, along with her insistence on defending her children despite their violent behavior, escalated the situation to a new level of tension and complexity. Both the parents and the officers had different perspectives on the matter. Parents may feel the police action was excessive, but the law requires law enforcement to maintain order and cannot afford leniency toward obstruction. On the other hand, the officers are obligated to carry out their duties and cannot allow resistance to lead to chaos. My phone, they have your phone. Do you live out here? Yes. Okay, what apartment do you live in? No, I don't live in the I live here, but I don't live here. I'm not even paying, but appreciate it. This is the way this works. If you do not live here on this premises, it means you are required to identify yourself to me. If you do live here, can't provide it, now you're required to quell my suspicions that you're not loading and prowling. Now, what's your name? Cameron. I don't want you to be in handcuffs, but I don't want to take you to jail. I would much rather call your mom to come pick you up. Hey, yo, hold up. Chill out. First of all, we're gonna start this whole thing over. Why is my daughter in handcuffs? Your daughter is in handcuffs because she was fighting and then thought it was a good idea for her to try to swing on the police. I don't have about to go to the juvenile detention center. You can ask him questions. If okay, you also, why, where's my son? Who's your son? They tried to the tackle. No, this is what happened. She was not fighting. They was jumping a boy and then Rashad had jumped in. And I guess they tried to arrest him too. We're, we're gonna stop all this. So, this is the way this works. Uh, that's your daughter? That's my daughter and that's okay. my son. Your daughter is under arrest. Um, what did the officers do to my baby? They tried to tackle, they tried to tackle Rashad and that's when she jumped okay, on hey, him. Hey, 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 all right, all right, all right. I heard about this. So he's I'm the first one that charged that baby. Ma'am, excuse me? So right now your son Rashad, I believe he's one of the ones we had to clean his belly. He's not being charged with anything, okay? As this large fight broke out, officers arrived on scene here and we tried to think, gain control. Your son Rashad charged at one of the officers. When that happened, I guess his sister came up and that's when she struck two officers. That's why she is now detained and, and being placed under arrest. So out of this whole fight, my daughter the only person going to jail? Man, bro, As of right now, yeah. Fighting. Mom! Mom! Stop! Ah, I know you out there! What you keep hollering for me for? You don't think I can hear you? Do you not understand that I'm already pissed off? Because you told me that you would stand at the school. Call me and say And I don't give a f when Mom. nobody called you and say. And you were supposed to be your ass at my house. So how you get crossed out to Savannah Garden? How's my daughter going to jail? Because you doing some extra after discussing how to handle the teens, the officer spoke with another mother of the suspects. Unlike the aggressive mother from before, this one seemed to be someone who respected the law and understood right from wrong. She was a good mother, recognizing that these kids needed to learn a lesson, and preferably, that lesson should be learned at the police station. But, not every mother is like her. You got anything on you? No, Tell me a now. Lighter. A lighter? Where? Don't reach for it. Have you been around weed? Because your clothes reek a bit. You might as well just tell us. In your, your sock? sock? Uh, Alright. And I'll take your shoes off. Pop this up. Alright. Sit back in the car. She got nothing in her boxers. She had weed on her. No charges, right? No charges. Mom's right there. She comes over. Police. Here over these. Got it? She had a joint in her shop. Who, who's that one? She's the one who threatened to kill us last time, but uh, I don't know. Hello, ma'am. Tell me what exactly went on. So, our officers responded to a, uh, a fight that just occurred here. Mm -hmm. It was just a large fight. Yeah. When they arrived on scene, a lot of people scattered. Yeah. Um, a couple of people uh, came running up and. So, I'm the new senior manager here. Okay. I'm not going to tolerate it, so if you are tied into this, I'm going to get a notice to vacate. 
Okay. I already done got it from right. my ADO. Have you met Linda? This is the property manager. You hurt me anymore, bud? You okay? It's really on my head. My head is hurting. You want him to go with the MS? No, he's fine. Where y'all think it hurts? Too? Juvenile? We're, we're calling right now. Alright, love you too. Cameron, I'm the mother. Her? My son, y'all just called me. Hey, what's going on? He claiming he wasn't out here fighting. He got put in handcuffs because he was out here fighting. At some point in time with somebody. He's a juvenile and you gotta, we gotta release him to your custody. Okay. So what happened? Big fight ensued and we showed up. Face the vehicle for me. Turn away, CJ. And so I'm not telling you what to do, but I think you need to make better decisions. Be I'm, just be saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The only the point that choice. I'm trying to make. The, we have to take photos to get him to understand. Yeah, regardless if he gets into stuff or not, right. who he hang out with, he don't need nobody. He don't, he don't hang out with nobody. nobody. No, that's my son. Uh -huh. and he's not a problem child. No. Anything else? Nope. Yeah, okay. Good. Thank you. I didn't just say he was. I'm just saying how he gave. He was just walking to y'all put my child in handcuffs because he was walking. So you believe your child over the? Okay. So out of all the kids that was actually fighting, y'all just detained the kids that wasn't. Everybody's scattered, okay? Mm -hmm. So I don't know who is fighting, but if they don't live here, it's called loading and prowling. What's your name and badge number? Let me get a card. I don't have a card, actually. Y'all just gonna put him in handcuffs. Because and y'all ain't got a reason, so I don't know. He wasn't fighting. She wasn't even fighting. She got him on the video camera. Coming to the house and coming from school. Uh-huh. I better go to the ones that y'all need to go to. And this might just be the next mother who truly deserves the title of mom, among all the others who showed up at the scene. Stop that, stop it. Oh, uh -huh. for them. Uh -huh. No, no, no you ain't coming quiet. out until your mom says so. Sit back in there. What's, what, can anybody tell me what's going on? We got a call that there were about 20 children up here fighting. He refused to identify himself, refused to give me his name, his birthday. So that point it became obstruction, he went to handcuffs to be detained. Mm -hmm. That's why he didn't release him to you. What are the charges? Loading and prowling and obstruction. Loading and And obstruction. Listen, if I ask you one more question and you shake your head at me, and you ask me with attitude, they can go ahead and take, why didn't you tell this man where you did that? This man ain't lying on you. I know your attitude. You, this man is not lying on you. You should not have came down here. It is a phone in the schoolhouse that you can use as several phones there. You know that. And then you got an attitude. Ma'am, thank you. Oh, my phone Okay, Camaro, what's wrong with that? Camaro, you are in somebody else's property. That don't work like that. I talked to her dad. All right, so just wait for the court date. So I called the jail to see if they were going to take her, but the jail wasn't going to. That's literally the only reason she's not going over. After their dramatic actions, these teens certainly earned some remarkable achievements on their way to adulthood. The girl in blue was charged with felony obstruction, loitering, and prowling, and two counts of simple battery. Gorilla was charged with possession of marijuana, obstruction of an officer, and loitering and prowling. Specifically, in Savannah, Georgia, if convicted of battery on a police officer, an individual could face up to one year in jail and a maximum fine of $1,000. Offenses like obstruction and loitering may result in lesser penalties, but they still contribute to the offender's criminal record. The remaining teens were released to their parents, who will act as their legal guardians. Some of you might think, ah, it's probably no big deal. But sorry, the law is not lenient. So, if you're thinking about following in their footsteps, think again. Are you sure you want to test the waters with those kinds of penalties? Share your thoughts with everyone. After the conflicts between the teens and law enforcement, we move on to another story involving family tensions, where anger and a lack of control have led a young individual into a tangled legal situation. I'm flat my tires, yeah. I want my money for my bike. She flattened your tires? Yeah, come up, yeah. I'm you flat. I don't know what's going on. I can't hear. Hold on, Daddy. Stay on the phone. You come in here, she now bust up all kind of um, glass in my, in my mama's um, house. You know, just throwing stuff all over the place. On the night of April 1st, 2023, Georgia police received a distress call from a mother requesting assistance to remove her 18-year-old daughter, Jan, insert image here, from the house. Jan, who had broken the TV, thrown objects around, and deflated the tires, seemed like she was auditioning for a show titled, Who's the Best Destructive Person? But unfortunately, in real life, these actions don't just get you scolded by your mom. They also lead to legal charges. Hi, how can I help you? I called because I need her to be removed from my mom's house. That's my daughter. She got it said. She burnt up something at her house early. I don't know what she did, but burned up a book back something. I was on my job. She just got here. 
you come in here, she now bust up all kind of um glass in my in my mama um house. It's like you don't pay no bills, you don't. I mean, like you so, need to be go. So this is your this my house. mother's house. I okay. stay with my mom. You know, she keep coming here. She was staying at my door. My door not put out. That's why you're mad. Is your mother in the house right now? Yes. Okay. I call. So. My mom is gonna obviously she home and sick. She don't have time for all that. You ain't coming up in here. If you wish everybody bye. What is she fear upset about? Why was she? Her sister. I don't know. I was at work. I don't care what she mad about. She need to get her and go. Okay. Well, before, well, hold on. Before we got here. Um, Clearly, there was an argument going on. She came from I don't know where. She just got here, throwing whatever I was in my room. So, you're, what you're saying it is wasn't no she, argument, she no showed up That's basically that. what she did. Okay. You threatened anyone else in the she house? She said she just said she wished all of us be dead. But okay, so what? Did she ever get into a fight with? That's what I'm trying to tell you. I don't Can, know. I said, I got her earlier. I don't. And your your daughter. You your drama over here. Mario, could you go talk to the daughter? Sure. While the other officers approached the suspect, the responding officers followed the woman into the house to further assess the scene of the destruction and gather additional evidence for the case. How you doing? I'm Officer Florio. Oh. What's your name? She put my um, the laptop right here on the curb. What's going on, Janaya? I don't know what's going on. I can't hear. Hold on, Daddy. Stay on the phone. I'm about to leave and they're gone. So I asked my grandma where my stuff at. Mm -hmm. She talked about my sister came here. I don't know. Whatever she did and your laptop on the curb. Why, why you let her come get my stuff? Will she come and get my stuff up? Yeah. So you just came here to pick up your stuff? My Is stuff it... gone. Where's I'm pretty sure it's broke. I didn't even know it was right. I just saw it. No, I didn't even talk to them. I, this is my first time saying something to them probably. I come in here and leave. Where do you stay at now? Right here. You almost there? No. Okay, so where do you stay at? Here, but I don't be here. When's the last time you stayed here? Last night. Last night? Yeah. All right, um, and you don't know where the rest of your stuff is? No. Do you have your ID on you? All right, well, I mean, if you want to pick that up, and put it on. you don't want to pick you just want to leave it here then? You probably get to read it out here. It's a laptop. Is it your laptop? Yeah, my daddy did. Your dad did? Okay. How long you guys arguing for before we came here? We don't. Nothing. We you guys aren't arguing at all? No. Did you guys talk at all? Okay. Wait, and you're not injured at all? Wait. Can I see your hands? No. Okay. You don't have any bruises or nothing? You guys didn't get into a fight or anything? No. Right. I report that mother I just bore her arm. Um... Uh, your mother as well, because she's a homeowner here. <laughs> Hello. Hey, my name's Officer Jensen. Are you uh, the grandmother? Okay. She heard of something at her sister's house. So her sister came over here and threw some of her stuff in the crib. And being a father in her house. Whenever you say she's tearing it up. Broke a bunch of glass back there. Could you show me where that happened? She threw that. This is this room was cleaner than that. She threw stuff in there and then she broke up. We put this stuff in here when we put the cooling tree up. And she took and broke all these, this glass and all that. Let's see. What is that? Here, I'm going to take a step in here just so I can get a better view. Excuse me, little man. So the glass here that's broken, you said that happened tonight? Yes, yeah, it did. What, uh, do you know what that belongs to? Did the room look like this before? She threw the TV. I even heard TV. My mom brought that TV in. She's she going to get charged for that. Well, she ain't did it like the. The, the mess, yeah, the but mess, the broken the, stuff. Broken stuff. So we have a that's TV? Not, we have a TV that's broke. She just was really throwing mm -hmm. stuff. Man, you're not wrong. My bike, I don't think I'll let you. She flat my tires. Yep, I want my money for my bike. Tire flat. I don't even ride. I ride this bike to the store. Screen and back. I know that bike four times. Is there any other property damage I in this room or elsewhere? With that. No, she's just been here. What, what about the... Hey, don't be that, please. Just tires? Tire with that. Okay. Because the knife shouldn't even be in. Okay. Is, are there any other property damage in the house aside from what happened in here? No, sir. She... Did she get into a fight with any of any pushing, shoving, no. anything like that? She, she, she just break up stuff and throw stuff. Okay. I'm on the ground. Okay. Do you know if she lives here? That's when I got up and called her. I see you about to get up. Does she live here? No, she was staying with her sister. My oldest daughter, she was staying over there. She had stayed with her grandma. She had stayed. I guess we have, I don't know. Yes. And where's your room at? Right. I was right here. That's why I was laying in my bed watching TV because I just got off from my job. Your daughter and you, I assume you lived together at some point, right? And then she moved out. Well, I just moved back here last year. 
Yeah. I'm going to go speak to your mother again, all right? What's your daughter's name, by the way? Janai. Okay. Um, I saw that there was some property damage in the back there. It looks like uh, Janiah knocked over a TV and picture frame back there, too. Yeah. Did you hear it? Okay. Um, has Jemiah, has she ever lived here with you? Okay. How long did she stay here before? Okay, so she recently moved out then. I'm assuming. All right. Although the police had gathered detailed statements from Jan's family, they still needed to interview her to make a final decision. However, based on her attitude, it seemed that she wasn't particularly willing to cooperate with the police. Hey, my name is Officer Jensen. Oh, whose laptop is this? I don't want to keep that in the gutter. Um, what's going on tonight? I just talked to your mom and grandma. The what? Because they already gave me their statements, but I want to hear what you have to say. I came home looking for my stuff in the phone. Um, what stuff were you looking for? My phone and stuff. Okay. When did you leave them here? Today, this morning. And came back? Where were you at before you were here? You were working? Okay. You got into a bit of an altercation in there with people? that you were upset and throwing stuff around. So why didn't let somebody come get my stuff out of here? Yeah, but did you, did you knock anything over in there? Yeah, some, some stuff broke in my room, but ain't nobody here. Right. Nobody in the room. Provoke anything from you? Did they no. threaten you or put their hands on you? It was about five feet, nobody was close. Um, how long ago was it that you got here to the house? Not too long ago, probably like minutes ago. Who? Your friend? Uh, did they collect your ID yet? Yeah. Well, he's busy in there. Let me just uh, get some info from you. How do you spell your last name? And how do you spell your first name? J-A-N-Y-I-A. Mm -hmm. And what's your date of birth? And what's a good phone number for you? Is there anything else you want to tell me about what happened tonight? Because what it sounds like you're telling me is that you came over here to pick up some items and you couldn't find them. They got rid of your clothes somehow. So then you got... Do you know who has your stuff? My sister. Can you tell her? Uh, no. Well, she don't even let it come get it. She knew. Whenever they told y'all, because I didn't even call y'all here, first of all. She don't want to call y'all, so... I don't know. Don't tell me y'all. See that? Okay. We'll just hang out here with this officer real quick. As soon as the officers turned away, Jan's pinup anger finally exploded, and she threw her laptop, despite the police trying to stop her. This impulsive act not only escalated the tension during the interrogation, but also led to serious charges. In Georgia, damaging property under $500 falls under the category of criminal trespass according to OCGA July 16, 21, with penalties that can include up to 12 months in jail or a $1,000 fine. Given the circumstances, the police's decision to arrest Jan was reasonable. Her uncooperative attitude and the physical and emotional harm she caused her family went beyond a simple argument. Even if it's a relative's house, you can't just throw things around without the homeowner's consent. Perhaps she could use a crash course on emotional control and, for sure, a pocket-sized legal handbook. Uh, no, ma'am. We... Sorry, it's already, bro. Sit on the back bumper right here. Just sit down. Sit down. She decided to throw her laptop. I don't care. It don't even matter, yo. Can you just here. just relax? No, okay? I can't. Cause what's she even call y'all here for? We're, we're, not, we're literally going to get some paperwork. We'll be out of your hair, okay? I don't understand why you're throwing your laptop out here. They love me. They do it every time. Well, you're you're 18 now, so you can you can move out. And... I'm not. Is it you're not? How old are you? Where would you like me to put this? I'm going to call the police when they use it. Do you know how your mom's tires got flattened? Oh, well, probably some glass. It's glass in the room, too. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I don't remember. Well, I got to pay for it. Well, if they're going to pay for my stuff, then... Mom, you can. Yeah. So, here's the deal. Stand up for me, please. Punch back. Oh, my God. Lena. <laughs> So 
black. <laughs> oh my god! I'll come and talk to you. Give me a second. Oh, oh my god! It's a new year. Oh, oh my god! Does this one look like it? Oh, okay. Dad, yeah, please. Sure. Yeah. Give us a second. Yeah, get this first off. I gotta take it. I gotta, um, uh, I gotta go pass it down for you. Jan's grandmother, although clearly worried about her granddaughter's arrest, couldn't avoid the reality that every action has consequences. However, the police did their duty by protecting the family and ensuring that the situation didn't turn into an even bigger mess. Hey, I'm Officer Florio. I'm just helping these guys out. The guy can come and explain everything to you. She said you can hang on to this for her. It's her sweatshirt. A fight between her and her mom and, uh... Janai broke a TV in there. This is where we're at right now. There's nothing else we can, we, we have to make the arrest on this. So, um, she'll get a court date, obviously somebody tomorrow. Uh, you taking her to jail? Yes, ma'am. Oh my God. All right. so this is what has to be done right now. Of course, the court can make changes and, and they have a lot more authority and power over us. Our granddaughter get handcuffed and not know what's going on. Yeah. So here's what's going on. Oh, I'm going and, really and stand right here, please. Okay, so. You're being placed under arrest for criminal trespass DVA. Trespass? Let me explain. Property in there that's under $500 in value. So it's a misdemeanor. But they took my stuff! I understand. You can't come over here and start breaking stuff because you can't find the things that you're looking for. Oh, with disorderly you. conduct, okay? I can do okay? I can do oh. You're gonna go to jail tonight, okay? But you'll be able to speak with the judge in the morning. Alright? And don't feel you postponed and you'll be out. No. We'll get your dad's phone number, okay? <laughs> okay, I gotta go to jail for how long? Most likely it'll just be overnight in case you'll be able to talk to a judge in the morning because it's a weekday. It's bond at that point. Uh, Y'all gonna post me on the Facebook website? No, whoever does that posts us that. We don't do that. You don't have to tell me about that because we don't do that. We don't have any control over who posts those uh, pictures on Facebook. Um, here's your phone. You can take it to my grandma. No, I don't want them to hold my phone at jail. Jan was taken to jail and faced several charges, including criminal trespass and disorderly conduct. Family conflicts are inevitable. Who hasn't turned their home into a battlefield at least once? But when it crosses the line of the law, it's no longer just a family matter. Georgia's Family Violence Act doesn't need an invitation or anyone's permission. If someone starts smashing things or making threats at home, the law will show up like an uninvited guest, but it certainly won't leave any gifts behind, except for paperwork and some records. Do you think Jan learned her lesson after the law calmed her rage? Or did the police intervention only make her feel more distant from her family? What about you? In the end, this story teaches us one important thing. When you let anger take the wheel, your destination isn't relief. It's the courtroom. Remember, violence is never the answer. Unless you want the question to be, how much is bail? From defying authority to facing the consequences, watch as a spoiled brat's attitude takes a turn for the worse when she learns the hard truth about respect and the law. Do I get home? Who do I call? I don't know. I'm not sure I'm being an asshole, but... On September 29, 2023, an officer from the Urbandale Police Department spotted a silver SUV cruising down the road, but something was amiss. One of the headlights was not working. The officer decided to initiate a traffic stop, unaware that this seemingly minor infraction would unravel a story far more complex than a mere burned out bulb. Good evening, I'm also giving me the Urban Dale Police. The reason I stopped tonight, you have a headlight out. You aware of that? Yeah. Okay. Do you have your license, registration, insurance? I can reach right mm -hmm. Where are you guys coming from tonight? Where are you guys heading to? Where's home? Just around the corner. Right time. What's that? 3471. Go ahead and start me a second. Not emergent. When the traffic officer approached the driver, the conversation quickly shifted to identifying the driver and verifying the license plate. However, what concerned them more was the clear signs of intoxication that the driver was exhibiting. Could this just be an ordinary evening? Or was there a more serious challenge lurking within this SUV? To clarify the situation, the police decided to ask the driver to step out of the vehicle for a sobriety test right on the scene. Hey, Sebastian. Sebastian? That's, I'm sorry, that's Sebastian. Never mind. Yeah. He's got your ID. Let me have you step out for me, okay? That's fine. Can I? You can put the stuff on the dashboard there. Yeah. Put it, yeah, you can put it away or put it aside. I need to... 
You can shut your door. You're step over here, okay? Yeah. Over here. Actually, let's, we'll come out right here. What I want you to do, so I want you to imagine a straight line here, okay? I want you to place your left foot on, on there with your right foot directly in front of your left. So right foot in front of your left. You're gonna make a turn, you're gonna take nine heel toe steps back. You understand so far? Okay. What's wrong? You're scaring me, I'm sorry. Okay. Do you have, do you have questions? No, I'm sorry. It's... So. You can arrest me, I'm sorry. I don't think I can do this. You don't think you can do it? Do you wanna try? Do you not wanna I mean, try? I can you... try, but you're scaring me the out of me, man. I'm going straight, I, I can walk straight. Can you, can you tell me when I'm halfway there? So you're gonna count your steps out loud. As the officer attempts to conduct sobriety tests, the driver clearly shows signs of fear and anxiety. But is it merely the fear of the police, as this grown man claims, or is there something deeper at play? The tension in the air raises questions about his state of mind and the choices that led him to this moment. You ready? Do you, do you have any other questions? I, I just tried one. Okay, well that wasn't, that wasn't one, that was the starting position. That's not one, that's the starting position. So just did one. Nope, this is the starting position. Nope, that's zero. You haven't taken any steps yet, okay? That'd be zero. You haven't taken... This is the starting position. You don't... Do you not want to do this test? No, I will do the test, but I've just never done this before, so I'm sorry. So... Nope, that's the, start... that's the starting position. So the first... Guys, you're scaring the shit out of me. Is that one or no? No. Can I spit? Or... Yeah. Get back, in the, get back in the starting position for me. Okay. No. The first step from there would be one. Okay. Keep going. Keep going like I demonstrated. You're scaring the shit out of me. I'm sorry. Keep, just keep, keep. the shit out of me, dude. Get back in the starting position for me. Keep going. Can I start? Dude, yeah. I'm sorry. You scared the. F we're not. We're just gonna move on to the next test, okay? You didn't arrest me. I. You're like. You scare me. I'm sorry. I. I don't know what you're gonna arrest me for. I'm trying to walk and you're scaring the shit out of me. Okay. I'm trying to walk and you're. F okay. Well, we're, we're just move on to the next test. Okay. Okay. So come over here. Just step over here for me. Actually. Actually, you wanna turn my. Yeah. Take down off. It's hard to believe he's genuinely afraid of the police presence. That seems more like a convenient excuse. The real fear lies in the possibility that the officers might uncover the truth behind his behavior. It's a futile concern since the police can clearly see he's trying to hide something. After failing the initial sobriety test, he has no choice but to face the next one. In a surprising moment, he mentions having consumed three beers, showcasing a shocking ignorance of the serious consequences that could follow. This confession immediately raises alarms for the officers. All right, I'm not gonna have you do the test, okay? It's fine. I'm arresting. Okay. So, how much have you had to drink tonight? I had three beers. Three beers? Yes. How big were they? Uh, Sixteen. Have beers. you ever been arrested for OWI before? Yes. Okay. So you've been through this before. Okay. You're willing to give me a breath on PBT? Yes. Okay. All right, you're gonna blow through the tube long and steady till I, until you hear a click, okay? Dude, I'm tired of going to jail. I'll give a breath. Okay. I don't want to go home. Okay. All right, go ahead and blow through the can tube, you, okay? Can we can we speak? We can. At first, he attempts to engage in conversation like any rational individual, but as the situation unfolds, the initial veneer of fear begins to fade. Beneath this facade, his true nature starts to emerge. Just as we approach the moment where he will be asked to blow into the breathalyzer, the tension thickens. What began as a routine traffic stop quickly escalates when the officer uncovers that his driver's license is revoked. The law is clear, driving on a revoked license is a serious offense, and yet so many individuals underestimate the gravity of their actions. As he prepares for the breath test, one has to wonder, will he finally confront the consequences of his poor choices, or will he continue to evade responsibility? Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, stop. Yes, sir. Here. No, please, well, if you want to try again, we can. 
I know how it's gonna go. I already admitted to you that I've been drinking. Mm -hmm. Sorry? You wanna do this test or not? I already did it. You stop blowing, you gotta blow until you hear a click, yeah. okay? A little bit too hard. That's actually the first time I've ever seen that air. What do you want me to do, man? Don't blow so don't blow so hard, okay? Just long, steady breath. Just like that. Keep going, keep going. I'm calling the public. Myself 40 and 50. Is it Gibney? Yes. I understand. I just don't want to understand. Okay. Alright, so here's the deal. One, you're driving while impaired. Two, you're revoked. You're not suspended, you're revoked. Okay. You're revoked to drive. You're not suspended. I don't know what you're revoked for, but I'd have to, I didn't ch check that bit. Revoked for what? I don't know. Revoked. You're revoked. When was your okay. last OWI? All right. Well, we'll figure that out and we'll go from there, okay? At this time, you are gonna be placed under arrest, okay? Am I going to jail? Well, we're gonna go back to the sta our station first and do some more testing, okay? For what? For what? For what? For what? You're driving while drunk. Nope. Oh, stop. Nope. Not done yet. Just stop. After failing several tests, the officer announces the arrest for operating while intoxicated (OWI) and driving while revoked. The moment the cuffs go on is when reality hits for the driver. Legal consequences are inevitable when someone chooses to disregard basic laws. Why am I going? Where? Like, where am I going? Right now we're going to the Urbandale Police Department. Okay, so who do I call to get home? I don't know if we're, you're going to be going home tonight. Great. Hold on. Don't get in just yet. Do you have anything on you that's going to poke me, stick me, anything like that? Copy in the alley. Copy in the How do I get out? How do I go home? We'll, have, we'll discuss that later, okay? Do I get home? Who do I call? I don't know. I'm not sure I'm being an asshole, but I've we'll, been we'll more than cooperate with you. We'll discuss that when we get back to the Urban Dale PD. Don't f***ing bullshit. Sorry. Good. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm off this guy, TVT. He's good. Is he, and I'll ask him if he's okay to drive. If Sebastian's okay to drive, can he take your vehicle? Well, can he? We can figure that out when we get back to the Urbandale PD. Can okay? I speak to him? I'm All right. Sorry, I'm not, not this, trying to not bail this second. Out. I'm just. Can you? Can you push that a little bit? Because like it's. It's hurting my wrist. Can you push it a little bit. I'm not. Turn it. Turn. Can you turn a little bit more yes. to me? My cuffs. Hurts, man. It's way too tight. Do I get a phone call or no? When we get back to the Urbandale PD, we can make phone calls. So are you okay with that or not? No. I'll f Don't sit on your hands, okay? No, it's Dude, oh my god. Please, please. I'm please. not gonna loosen them up anymore. Oh. I can't. <laughs> I'm not a fing pig. Ow! 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 No, dude, don't. No, no, please stop. Oh my god, dude, why would you do that? I'm trying to loosen them up and so you can turn your hand. Oh, no, you can't fing drive me because look at me. I can't. Can Sebastian take your car? Are you Dumb, can you not see my hand? Can Sebastian be... take your car? Can you not see my hand? Tell I it. can't. Okay. Look, I can't. There's nowhere to park your car. I have no problem with Sebastian parking my car. Okay. Here's my hand. You do it. Do what? Move it so I can move. I can. I'm not loosening him anymore. Okay, then we're stuck here. Most people, when faced with arrest, plead for the police to let them go home. And this guy is no exception. However, such requests are rarely granted at that moment. As he's escorted to the police station, the tension mounts, marking the true beginning of the chaos. Go ahead and step out. I can't. Can you take that? Do what? Swing your left, your right leg out. I'm in so much pain. Step up to this wall right here for me. Can I get a phone call or no? Yeah, I'm gonna read you some stuff and then you can make phone calls, okay? Well, first of all, I don't see anywhere where anything that I did broke the law. 
the second wall. I would like to make my phone call. I four times that I've asked me. Okay. Well, you can, you'll get your chance to make phone calls here. Do you have any questions I, about this? Well, well what, what, what do you have? I'll, I'll try to actually answer. Do that There's no deputies here. You want to speak? Why do you want to speak to my supervisor? Well, so I can tell him. Because I'm reading this, and you arrested me before you even read me our rights. Well, then I'll, I'll just read them right now. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say cannot well, be used against you in a court of law. You, I'm asking for you to. Dude, he's 20. He knows definitely what's going on. No, I know you're saying that I know everything. What questions do you have? Well, if this guy wants to be an asshole, then he can. I'm not saying that I know everything. I obviously. Do you have any questions about what I read to you? Yes, I okay. do. No problem with it, he says. If you must be an asshole and... Dad what questions speak, do you have about this that I can I answer for I know that you? I don't know everything, but if he must be an asshole, we can. I would like to speak to who's in charge. That's what I'm asking. Throughout the encounter, the driver repeatedly asks to call his attorney mother, expressing confusion about the charges. His frustration highlights a common misconception that having legal connections can somehow shield you from the law. This moment serves as a reminder that the law applies to everyone, regardless of who they know. How do you think legal privilege affects one's perception of justice in situations like this? I'm not judging your authority and I'm not saying you're wrong, but if this guy wants to be a douchebag, then I'd rather talk to... What questions do you have for him that I can't answer on this? I'm not saying that you can't answer them at all. He's not here right now. What questions, okay. what questions well, do you he's, have? He's mocking me. What questions do you have? I would rather speak to someone who I know. This, is my, this is, is my sergeant right now. He's in charge. So... When I've been here, you've been arrested for uh, suspicion of drunk driving the last year. Yes. So I've been asking me, everyone just needs to be normal. But so I would like to know why I'm being arrested. You've been arrested for suspicion of drunk driving. Okay. And driving and driving while revoked. What's that? So what are my friends who are driving? I don't see the name. Else have been arrested here tonight? Well, I've had I was with three friends who have been arrested. Tonight. Nope. There was, there was one. There, there was there was just you and Sebastian in the car. Not right now. Not right now because we can't have, we can't have any water before we take this test. What did you get pulled over for? You were missing a headlight. Okay, and my friend was driving. If you want to argue that in court, you can. I would be happy to. Okay. Well, that's your right. Okay, right now that's fine. Again, we can't provide you with water until you've either taken this test or refused to take this test. I have not refused to take anything. I just wanted some. Okay, dude, I'm not, like, I'm not being an asshole, I'm just asking for some okay. water. Okay, and I'm explaining to you why we can't provide you with water right now. Okay, then get my attorney here. Can I not call my mom? What's her phone number? We're not going to argue this, okay? We have not to arguing it, I just want to call my mom. I'm sleeping, it's three, it's five o'clock in the morning. Are you serious? Dude, I'm not trying to be an asshole here, but like, are you serious? That's too many numbers, man. That's not too many numbers, that's a regular phone number. You can have it. She's not gonna answer you. It's fucking five in the morning. You have to call your mother. You. Why do you want to phone call you back? Hey, Michael. Perhaps his frantic pleas to call someone stem from the fact that his mother is a lawyer. He clings to the hope that her legal expertise will spring him from custody, all while trying to project an image of innocence, as if he has no clue why the police have arrested him. However, the reality paints a much different picture than the one he wishes for. As the situation unfolds, it becomes clear that the law has its own set of rules and they aren't as easily bypassed as he might believe. Hello? It's only 11 o'clock. Who am I talking to? I'm pretty sure I'm at 1695 Woodland Park going on to the Christian. You better get the phone to Mom. I tried turning it down. But... Mom, I got pulled over. This is f***ing stupid. Mom, I need... What? I can't. I'm sorry, what you said? If you're mad at me, I get it. Like, I, like, this is ridiculous. Urbandale Police Department. Urbandale Police Department. But you're not going to be here all night. I'm, I'm sorry, what? You're going to be in, you're going to be going to Dallas County Jail. What if my mom comes now? Oh, well, she doesn't have to go there. No, she doesn't have to go there. Where will I be released? Dallas County Jail. I'll be released from Dallas County Jail. Can you tell me what I'm arrested for? OWI second offense and driving while revoked. Dude, I, I'm not even driving. I'm, I'm sorry, but... Well, I'm at the f***ing Dallas... Well, I'm in Polk County or whatever. Where am I getting released from again? You're going to be going to Dallas County Jail. And I don't even know why. Can you tell me why? For like the fourth time, OWI second... For the fourth time. OWI second, driving while revoked. OWI second what? Driving while revoked when I already got my shit. Uh, when will my mom be able to pick me up? After you're booked into Dallas County. Yeah, no, I'm not I, fucking I, stupid. I, I don't know what time that's going to be. When do I get out? I no, don't know. Dude, you're being a f asshole. Get 
Tell me what I'm getting at, Mikhail. 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 You haven't been booked Call in yet. Me. I don't know. I don't control. What? Dude, Mikhail, you need to relax, man. No, dude, this is ridiculous. We're telling you everything, but dude, I'm I've been more than respectful. I'm asking you when I'm gonna get out of here. You're too drunk to even fathom. You keep repeating the same question. No, I'm not drunk. I'm being re reasonable. I would like to know when I get out. Okay, we have to go through our stuff here. Yeah, and then you'll get sent and that's fine. And then we take you. Okay, to then let me. Then tell me when I can leave. We're not telling you to hang up, but we're just saying that we can't finish it. Okay, well, okay. I, this is. Now, the officer has connected with his mother over the phone and the arresting officer has strategically positioned the camera, ensuring that the screen remains clear and unobscured. Um, Time-wise, if that's your question, uh, like I said, it's normally we're supposed to have a chase about an hour. Um, so typically it happens within an hour, we can kind of uh, nail this out, and then the drive up to Dallas County is about 20 minutes, 25. Hey, don't hit your head on the bar. Can I talk to my f***ing mom then? Man, what is your problem? Dude, I'm trying to talk to my mom. You're not letting me talk to my mom. Okay, give me a second. Hey, buddy, you're gonna have to stop there. Come on. Hey, okay? Before I come in there, I'm gonna have to put a helmet on you. No, I don't no. wanna do that. I need you here now. I need you. I'm hungry. Alright. I think it's being a criminal mistress. Yeah. Hello? Hey, he threw the phone, so we're gonna take it away from him, okay? Sit down. Um, if you need anything else, you can feel free to call the dispatch. Do you know the number? It's just uh, 222 Yep, and you can just ask for a mail and we'll get back to you. Thank you, bye. Well, I'm take that string away. You might have to get keys. Okay, well, you can't have that hood over your head. So, undo you. You guys have to undo If that. you want to keep the sweatshirt on, you're going to have to undo that. Okay, otherwise I'm going to think that's going to can you just offer it? Stand up. Don't touch me. Stop, stop. Do you not do any- Don't touch me! Stop, please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Michaela, stop. Outside, on the ground. The man faced charges of driving under the influence and operating a vehicle with a revoked license. This incident serves as a crucial reminder of the importance of obeying traffic laws and being fully aware of your condition before getting behind the wheel. If alcohol has been consumed, choosing a safe alternative like calling a taxi or having someone else drive isn't just a responsible choice. It's a necessity for protecting yourself and those around you. Taking responsible action not only helps avoid severe legal consequences, but also contributes to creating a safer road environment for everyone. So many people love you. I just don't understand. On February 21st, 2024, police were dispatched to a neighborhood to respond to a family dispute. A chase ensued as soon as the police arrived at the scene. 
You ain't going to that though. Come here, Sarah. Come here. Come on. 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 Come Running towards Paddlewood. He's laying on the ground in the yard now. Extra down. I'm sorry. The man was quickly apprehended when he could not escape the authorities' pursuit. However, he had health issues that escalated the situation, necessitating the police to be particularly careful in their decisions regarding this incident. You're an idiot. Oh, I'm my mom. I just saw him him almost 15. I tell you, Zim, I only hit him with one probe. That's so weird. Brother, hey, man, I, I ain't grabbing that bloody arm. Roll over again. All right. Bring knees up to your stomach. There you go. Come on. Stand up. Oh, so like you're on plane What's going on with you? I backed up. Sorry. No, you didn't. One of four, you can clear traffic. Gonna be at okay, my pants. Eight nine zero. I'm How old are you? Seven. What charges? They're at eight nine zero seven Harrytown. Ten four. Uh, you know, standard, pretty bad in her vehicle. Come on, life is ruined. Hey Dan! Can I get my inhaler? Stay there. Grab that thing. Alright, have a seat. Sit down. I gotta do paperwork on you. I'm trying to. Sorry. Oh, that's it. I've got his idea. Yeah. His biological, before he was adopted, so he has felonies, misdemeanors, he has everything. He's just a uh, suicide nine times, like literally okay. just happened, just got out of jail. Happened. No, they just got here like okay. 10 minutes. The guy right there in the blue, okay. see the man right there yeah, at the stop sign, away. called you guys to okay. figure this out. Because here Anna's crying, she doesn't know what to do. I'm on a call at work. Let me talk know, to her, sorry. okay? Go, go, go. Sorry. Ma'am. But I have I'm Deputy Widensall, okay? Okay, we are going to have EMS come check you out because you're clearly very injured, okay? Just have a seat. Everything is... All right. What's that? Okay, just take a couple deep breaths for me, okay? Just in and out. And I'm going to try to figure out what all happened today, okay? Um, I know she said you guys just got here, right? Do you remember? We were from, we were coming from Wilderness Landing, we were sleeping out there, and then we got into a fight. At Wilderness Landing? Okay. And he got in the driver's seat, and he was either drove off with me, or he was going to take my car and drive off, and I wasn't going to have any service. Okay. I just took the chance. Mm -hmm. I literally haven't been able to drive my car. Since you left Wilderness Landing? Okay, where is the lo that located? Do you, do you know the street? Oh, in Riley. Out in Lake Baker, look up Wilderness Landing Park. Okay. It's a free camping. Okay. She, she was. I, I noticed that you have injuries on your face. You have, you know, a black eye. Your cheek is swollen. The black eye was a couple days ago. My busted lip was last night, okay. and my cheek was today. It was at the. Um, my, my cheek, one of the neighbors literally ripped him out of the car because he was hitting me. Car, he got out and he started stabbing my tires and he started destroying my windshield. Finally unlocks the door and he hops in and starts punching me. He pulls the e-brake on and I can't put it down. So you said he did that to your windshield? Did you have um, a mirror here? Or he destroyed that? that last night. Your tail like last night or today? Last night. Okay. Uh, it looks like it's bleeding. Is that from when he was punching you in the vehicle? <laughs> last night before okay um so your swollen cheek is from today okay the woman the victim in this incident recounted that her boyfriend had assaulted her multiple times during the day slashed her tires and smashed the car windows she also mentioned that this was not the first time he had threatened to commit suicide if she left him assaulting a girlfriend can lead to severe penalties 
including jail time ranging from a few days to several years, fines, restraining orders, participation in rehabilitation programs, and probation or parole. Additionally, the offender may lose custody rights or face visitation restrictions. The specific penalties depend on the severity of the incident and the laws of each state. What'd you call me? I don't remember. I don't remember what you said. I, I could... something random. I, I thought you were just screaming for your mom. What do you mean? I don't know. You're 21. I'm just going to ask you a couple questions, okay? Do you remember about how many times he hit you in the face? Dad, I can't remember anything. Okay. I feel like I have a concussion, but I don't. You lost consciousness? I did this morning. Busted my lip. When we left the campsite, he was upset and frustrated because I wasn't helping him pack. I was worried about the animals and trying to keep them in the car and yelling at me and then he started destroying my car. He broke my driver's side mirror. My driver's side mirror. Um, he broke my, my mirror up top and the side I saw it on the ground. And I'm finishing packing up. Um, and he got so upset that he just started punching me and I just In addition to the woman's testimony, the police also sought further statements from the suspect to ensure fairness and transparency during the investigation of the incident. So what happened between you and your girlfriend today? Um, so we both been on drugs and was antagonizing. Okay. And we just had an event where we were at the campground. I'm trying to think of the name of it, she knows it. You'd have to ask her that part. Um, okay. Anyways, this is campground. It's a lot easier to do. I'm out in the woods in the middle of nowhere. And we do it on the back roads and stuff. And we got to the camp. Hey, this uh, this happened before. And um, got in a uh, verbal altercation, and she started tackling me and hitting me. And so I threw, I threw something at her. I'm freaking plates at her. I took a roll of styrofoam plates because she beat the crap out of me and like slammed me on my hip. I got back up and I hit her with a bag of styrofoam plates. That should be in the back of the car still. That's okay. Take your time. It was a really eventful night. Um, she started throwing like a, she slung a, I think it was a two by four, a broom pole at me, and I dodged the broom pole. Damage to the mirror happened on the car. I, uh, I and this was all last night. Last night, but okay, I did, okay. And then she made me run from the cops. Last night. She pretended to turn off the lights and run. Okay. Is this my arm loose? Okay. Okay. Okay, keep going. We got we got to like Alabama for some reason because I was driving in the dark and I can't see what was happening and astigmatism also. Okay. I'm choking up, sorry, I got it. That's okay. So we had to turn all the way from Alabama, and on the way back from there, he's one, she bit me. <laughs> it's not really show anymore. Oh, she bit me, yeah, uh, altercation. And I'm afraid to even say this part because last time we talked about it, the first battery charges that got dropped, she attacked me first. I'm usually on the defense. Gotcha. So I'm a string bean, I can't do much. <laughs> so we, we pulled over. And we talked about it and we promised we never hit each other again. We were on the way here. I wanted to spend all day with her today. I grew up watching my stepdad beat my mom. I can't live with myself like that. And I told her I'd like to spend my day with you than by myself because she was going to leave me here. As soon as I did it, I black out okay. whenever I get like that. So I didn't take my medicine today. I have anxiety. It's almost, almost something. It's depression medicine. We ain't eating today so we were both probably hangry. And she wouldn't let me in the car and I freaked out. Huh? Got the blue yeah. She stopped the vehicle, you got out of the vehicle, and you remember piercing the tire with a knife. She started threatening she was going to leave me, and I said, no, you can't. I can't remember exactly what she said. Okay. That's about when I started freaking out. Do you remember what the knife looked like? Rainbow 12.99 titanium uh, knife set at Walmart, and it's a pretty oil, oil color. I'm really about to pee my pants, I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Uh, no. I gotcha. Um, okay, so it was a rainbow knife. Um, after you stabbed the knife, do you remember where you put it? You broke it? No, it, it snapped. Oh, okay. I tried stabbing the windshield and it failed. You slapped her with your palm? No, I, I, like it was a little like, uh, like a palm right here. Okay. Right to right to like right here. Where? Over the truck, get him in there. Uh, is he having a medical? I mean, if he's we having a we just don't want to turn into something where he goes on. I gotcha. I'm like one more, one more minute yeah. and okay. one more minute. About how many times did you slap her? Do you remember? It was one time. She one time. Beat the crap out of me. Okay. And bite her bites hurt worse than anything. I don't really remember because right after that. Right after she bit me, he ripped me, beat the hell out of me. He hit me in the head about six times, punched me in the ribs about a bunch more times, rolled me around, hit me some more. And then I, I, I walked and went over to the, the car and I started telling her I was so sorry and I promised that we would never do this again. Thank you. Just uh, stay tight with him. I'm going to let them know that you're ready to go, okay? Immediately afterward, 
the man was taken by ambulance to the hospital for a health check before he had to face the serious consequences of his aggressive actions. I just left that there. I'm getting, I'm getting out of here. Okay. Uh, uh, so Paige. All right. Sorry. Hey, uh, Tell her I'm that's sorry. Enough. So many people love you. I just don't understand. Man, I'm sorry. I closed the door. Ultimately, the man was charged with offenses such as assault, vandalism, and drug use. Additionally, he could also face charges for obstructing justice. I'm in the middle of an investigation. I'm in the middle of a f***ing... Give me your f***ing name, so I can keep a name. On June 25th, a police officer spotted a vehicle driving recklessly, eventually involved in a minor accident. Suspecting the driver was under the influence, the officer initiated a DUI investigation. <laughs> Hi there. All right, well, I'm Officer Tatum with the St. Petersburg Police Department. I have nothing to do with the crash here. I'm here to investigate a possible criminal DUI. Oh, did you fall? Are you okay? Okay. All right, if you want to come right on over here for me. Can I check your eyes? Yes. Okay, do you have any contacts in? Yeah, I think so. Are they hard or soft? They're soft. Okay, perfect. Um, do you have any blindness? Right? Yeah, okay, yeah. but with your contacts and you can see and all that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. The officer then instructed her to place her feet together to administer the horizontal gaze nystagmus, HGN, test, a crucial tool in DUI investigations. This test assesses potential impairment by carefully observing involuntary eye movements, a reliable indicator recognized by law enforcement to detect intoxication. Failing this test often plays a significant role in building evidence for impaired driving charges. All right, so you can see this green light here? Yeah, of course. Take the light back and forth a bunch of times. Just, okay. just follow with your eyes and your eyes only for me, okay? Keep your head straight for me. Can you just straighten up? Awesome. Keep your head straight, so keep your head, like, pointed at me, but just look with your eyes, okay? Oh, shit. There you go. So keep your head straight. stupid. Are you able to keep your head straight? Do you understand what, get what I'm saying with that? Like, keep you, like, your face pointed at me, but just look, like, left and right with your eyes, okay? There you go. Keep following it. It's gonna go back and forth a bunch of times. No, you're doing say, great. right? Tell me Just keep your head I straight for me. Do you understand what I'm saying with that? Am I being clear? If I'm not, let me know. I'll give you a different direction. Okay, I can speak it a different language if you want. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Tell me a different language. I don't know. No, seriously. Tell me a different language. I don't know. No. Just keep your head straight for me, all right? You're doing great. Tell me a language I don't know. Tell me something okay. I don't okay. know. Do you mind if I bring you right over here just so we're not in the middle of the road over here? I don't give do a Okay, come on over here for me. Upon completing the horizontal gaze nystagmus, HGN, test, which indicated possible impairment, the officer then moved forward with the investigation by collecting crucial evidence related to the incident. This included gathering detailed information about the accident, the driver's physical condition, and any signs of intoxication. By law, officers must conduct thorough investigations in situations involving potential DUI, driving under the influence, ensuring that all factors, from the driver's behavior to witness statements, are documented. This helps build a complete case and determine whether legal actions, such as arrest or further testing, are necessary. Come on, start your front camera yep. for me. I'm just gonna bring you up here. I love my clipboard up here. Nah, yeah, you what y'all gotta do, bro. Ready? Yeah. Ready? He's just asking if I was ready, so. Are you ready? Uh, no, I want to make sure you do. I understand. What do you have? Okay. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And would you say you're male or female? I have to ask. It's a ask serious question. Are Don't you male or female? That. Don't ask me that. What does your driver's license mm -hmm. say? I can give him my license. My oh, I'm just asking you. Yeah. I don't know. Um, or would you say you're white, black, Hispanic, other? Both. All three. Okay. Matter of fact. Uh, what, how tall are you? 5'1". What's your point? And how much would you say you weigh? 110. What's your point? It's not even yelling, baby. I can tell you what the f yelling is. What's your social security number? Do you know? During questioning, the young woman exhibited a disrespectful and dismissive attitude, refusing to cooperate and dodging basic questions. Her arrogance here reflects a common misconception, thinking that giving officers a hard time will somehow benefit them. But what should people know about their rights during a stop? There's a line between protecting your rights and obstructing justice. Where do you think she crossed that line? What's your point, bitch? And what's your address? 
I hope to see you there. And a phone number for you? Hold on, I need to put your license plate. I'll give it to you. Here, come here. Then Not I need right to finish now. what the I'm I'm I'll give you a call. Can you come? No, we gotta then finish this to real me. quick. We can do this in a I don't minute. Give a fuck. I'm in the middle of an investigation. I'm in the middle of a fucking. Give me your fucking name, bitch. I can keep a name. I need the print. I'll give it to you here in a minute. Uh, are you sick or injured today? Are you sick or injured? Do you have any physical defects? Are you a diabetic? Are you epileptic? I need to make sure you're medically okay. Are you having any issues right now? Are you taking any medications? Would you say your overall health is good, fair, or poor? As the officer conducted field sobriety tests, things took a turn for the worse. The woman failed to follow instructions, yelled at the officer, and acted irrationally. Sobriety tests are designed to give officers a clear view of impairment. By resisting them, she's only adding more evidence to support a DUI charge. You say your overall health is good, fair, or poor? So I have a couple of tests I'd like for you to participate in if you would like to. Love to. Okay, so the first one I'm going to bring you right over here. Right. So we're going to use this yellow line right here. So I'm going to put you in the starting position and I'm going to give you the instructions from there, okay? Perfect, and your hands down by your side. And can you touch your heel to your toe on your right foot? There you go. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the instructions, just stay like that, okay? So I want you to take nine heel to toe steps down the line. It'll look like so. Hold on, not yet, not yet. Three, you'll get to nine. You'll take your back foot off the line. You'll take nine heel to toe steps back down the line. It'll look like this. One, two, three. Hold on, wait, not yet, not yet. Hang on. I need to finish the instructions for you. I'm sorry, did I, did I miss the steps? Um, I didn't finish the instructions. Do you I wanna, know that. Well, do you want me to give you all the instructions? Did I fuck up? I'm asking you a question. Did I, I fuck you. up the steps? You don't need to yell. I heard you. You don't need to yell. Did I fuck up the steps though? Okay then. Okay. So this next one we're not going to use a line for, okay? So we'll come back over here so we're not even paying attention to the line. So this next one, um, I'm going to put you in the starting position again. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So put your feet together for me. And when I tell you to start, you'll pick either foot. You'll pick that foot up six inches off the ground. Okay. I want you to bro, hurry listen. the fuck up, you'll listen, bro. Look at your toe, and I want you to count out loud, 1,001, 1,002, until I tell you to stop. It'll be about 30 seconds, okay? Sure. sure. But if you do, pick it back up and continue where you left off, okay? Do you have any questions on that one? No, ma'am. Okay, you can start whenever you're ready. Go and look down at your toe for me. Two. Three. Can you look down at your toe for four, me? Four. Can you look at your toe seven, for me? Look at your toe. Eight. Look nine, at your toe for me. Ten. What's your point, bro? Eleven. Sorry, hold on. 11, 12. Okay, 15, you can go and stop. 15, 16. Okay, come on over here for me real quick. After failing the sobriety tests and continuing her disruptive behavior, the officer had no choice but to arrest and read her rights. Even at this moment, her aggressive attitude continues. At this point, her arrest was inevitable, and the legal process will now follow its course. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back for me. You're being placed on arrest for driving under the influence. Can somebody advise radio? I think you're on range. Which are good there? Uh, 72 Delta. We'll bring you back to the second car back here. I'll put you on the passenger side here. Actually, I'm sorry. I'll do the driver's side so that we're not having to deal with the bushes. That's right. Another seat. Remember, I gotta read you these real quick, okay? So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in the court of law. If you can afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you. Uh, you can decide at any time to exercise these rights. Do you understand each of these rights as I explained them to you? Do you understand those rights? Shut the fuck up. Is that a no? Shut the fuck up. The woman's actions during the traffic stop and sobriety test resulted in serious charges. She was charged with driving under the influence, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest, 
she now faced the full force of the law. These stories are not just a lesson about the power and rebellion of youth, but also an important reminder about respect, responsibility, and the consequences of actions. When teens choose to confront law enforcement, they're not just facing police officers, they're facing the law and society itself. Remember, when you cross the line of respect and duty, every action comes with a price. Let's reflect on this lesson and always act with a clear understanding of the consequences.